Hello, Ken. How you doing? Uh, thank I'm you for coming. On, thank you for coming on to the channel. And uh, we haven't we haven't done a recording, I think, in almost two years. Oh, is that long? I think it's two, been two years. I'd have really? to double check, but I think it's been pretty. Oh. Years, maybe a year and a half. Just check. See how so, uh, you know, you know, a lot has happened. Um, but um, I'd like to take the opportunity for the the audience um, to uh, get your um, knowledge about C60 and how it could help with their health. And, uh, you know, everyone that watches my show, you know, I couple it with a bunch of other stuff, you know, I, I put it in anti-aging boxes and stuff and, and, um, but there's a lot of benefits. I've been using C60 for probably close to four or five years now. And, um, you know, I just, uh, yeah, I, you know, my personal, uh, experience with it is, is that I used to be farsighted and I no longer needed to use my farsighted glasses about three months into using C60. And that's when I start I started like getting more interested in, 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 into it. And I how I found about C60 was when you were doing shows with Rex. Oh okay yeah. <laughs> yeah so, and that's that, that's how I learned about C60 was the shows that 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 he did. And, um, and then, you know, then you and I have, you know, done shows and, and, you know, I carry your products in my store. So, uh, thank you very much for coming onto the show and, um, yeah, you know, for ones that want to know what C60 is, let's start with the basics. Oh, okay. Well, we'll just go start back. Well, C60 is a soccer ball. It's a little molecule of 60 carbon atoms shaped like a soccer ball. If you can see it, it's kind of right behind me there. And, uh, it's uh, it was discovered in 1985 by three researchers. It, so it solved a long-standing uh, uh, mystery in astronomy, and uh, in 1996, Harry Croto, Richard Smalley, and Robert Curl got a Nobel Prize in Chemistry uh, for the discovery of this unique molecule. Because as you can see, it's like a spherical molecule, and uh, of all of the same elements, which was unique, and it has unique chemical properties. And, and which we'll probably be talking about, obviously, like that. But what happened, it was really hard to make. It's still pretty hard to make. High purity C60 costs twice as much as gold by weight. And, uh, and it wasn't until the early 2000s they really started to do scientific testing for toxicity. Because here's a molecule found in outer space. It's also found on Earth. Like the burnt wick of a candle is like 0.25% C60. You'll find it lightning strikes. It's, it's created in meteoric impacts. You know, so it's, it's around but uh, not in high concentrations. And, uh, and so one of the famous first studies was the Botry study. And uh, that in that study, it uh, basically increased the lifespan of test animals by 90%. Now those were, uh, those were uh, Wister rats. So they're kind of a, a type of uh, a type of a wimpy rat that kind of uh, imitates human aging. And uh, so that's that was an increase, and in they usually they die of cancers and cognitive decline and other diseases associated with aging. But the Worcester rats had no none of those, and that's why they lived to such an extremely long lifetime. And uh, and there were some other studies, uh, like there's a, a after you know it, it, the study went for five and a half years. It's rumored that the last couple of rats had a terrible accident. You know, in this case, it was a, a, a case of perish, so you can publish. And, uh, but, you know, some people learn from their study. So they did another study with mice, which have a much shorter lifespan and they use wild type mice. So they're kind of, you know, they're tougher mice and they found an increased lifespan by 11%, but it completely prevented cognitive decline during aging of mice, of those mice, the wild type mice. And that's really, got, and that's what C60 does. It doesn't just increase lifespan. It increases health span because who wants to be like decrepit in a, uh, in a wheelchair. I mean, that's really not what people are looking for in life. And so it's, uh, so that kind of extends the life. Now, my personal uh, experience with C60, I was working on the, uh, I was running the uh, metal oxygen fusion reactor project. And, you know, it was kind of a replacement for energies from Fukushima, you know, a safe form of energy production. And, uh, and there was one of the problem with it is a lot of people that did this research, you know, as a late professor, this and the dead PhD that. And so I didn't want to end up my crew or myself to end up like that. So I went researching for some radiation protected. And I discovered this stuff called carbon 60, C60. Its scientific name is Buckminster Fullerene. And for some of you, the older people out there with some gray hair, 
you may remember Buckminster Fuller. He was a polymath from like the 60s and 70s. He made those geodesic domes, you know, the hippie domes and other things. And so they named it the thing after him because all of the guys that were doing it were kind of officiados at it. And, the, and it's kind of spherical, right? Kind of like a hippie dome. So Buckminster Fullerene it became. And uh, and so, uh, where was I going here? <laughs> well, we were talking about the shape of the, the mouth. Yeah, and, and so it's kind of unique. And that you were in the lab, and you oh yeah, it. the labs, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> so it's obviously early morning here. I need my coffee, but um, and and so I, you know, I just one set of rats got C sixty, the other didn't. They hit them with a fatal dose of radiation. The C sixty rats lived, where the uh, where the control group, of course, died. And when I learned about that, I got a couple sources of C60 and for my crew and myself, and we're all still alive. So it must've worked for that. But I kept taking it afterwards because, you know, I had better metal focus, you know, more energy. And, you know, those afternoon blahs you get after eating lunch kind of went away. And uh, about seven months afterwards, I went in to see my optometrist and my eye doctor and my Druze or dry macular degeneration had completely disappeared. And he'd never seen that. He was a really old guy. So he'd never seen that in his practice. It's supposedly incurable thing. Well, considering my, uh, my situation, let me grab something here. Uh, forgot to grab my samples. I can't be talking about it without samples. We'll see how, uh, oh, oh, it's working too. Cause I got a green screen. So sometimes things don't work well. So anyway, I do, I, have, I do have some samples. Yeah, I, yeah, I got C60 and MCT oil. Now I made it for my friend Gary Rodriguez. He was the electrical engineer on my the Moxie fusion reactor project, and he had developed severe wet macular degeneration. It was so bad, you know, he was going to have to quit his work as an engineer. So I made C60 and MCT oil. If you can get up there, kind of see it close. And and for those out there that are listening, MCT stands for medium chain triglycerides, and your liver can turn those into ketones. And ketones can be used by your by your cells as a flex fuel. So your cells can run off glucose or they can run off ketones. So he had type two diabetes, which really contributed to his severe wet macular degeneration. And he took a tablespoon of C60 and MCT oil for over a year, a little over a year, and his severe wet macular degeneration completely went away. And we used to be able to post the pictures online, but some three letter agency said that's making a claim. And uh, and his type two diabetes went subclinical. So that kind of started it off. I mean, at that point, obviously there was something going on here. And uh, and since losing your vision is really, really bad, I, you know, learned to make formulations for myself. So I started, you know, making it for friends, family, and myself. And uh, and I shared it with alternative healthcare practitioners and and they had great results. So they shared it with their with their patients and they had great results. And, you know, one day somebody mentioned it, how it helped save his and his wife's life online. And uh, the whole thing kind of blew up there. There, you know, and and uh, so we were going to talk about, you know, I'll give like the three things you want to look for. And this is where kind of when it well blew up, you know, when C60 was a small group of people, right? There were just a bunch of geeky scientists and there was just a handful of people that used it, probably a couple thousand maybe. And uh, and so everybody made a quality product for their customers and themselves. So everything was great, right? But once it became popular, well, bad things started to happen because you get the scammers come in. And you have, now there are people out there that sell products that have no C60 in them or low, qual low concentrations of C60 or a uh, low quality C60. And so that's kind of what happened. And so when you're looking for a C60 product, there's things, and we're not the only one that does it. You want it, What you wanna do is you wanna get 99.99% pure C60 because that's the highest purity you want. And you wanna get a source that's called sublimation. And for those of you who are there, not paying attention in chemistry class, sublimation is when a solid turns into a gas then back into a solid. It's like evaporation, how evaporation is used for distillation you know, alcoholic beverages. So it's a very clean way and, and simple way of purifying it. Now there's a lot of C60 out there, which there's industrial uses of C60 and they do an industrial purification process, which uses methyl benzene, also known as toluene, which is a known carcinogen. So you probably don't want toluene or methyl benzene in your C60 as a known to, and to be taking a known carcinogen in your diet. Right, right. So the ones that aren't so scientifically inclined like you and I, right? Yes. What Ken is saying is, is that 
the filtration process, the sublimation process helps with the purification. Instead of a chemical pur purification, there is a sublimation um, purification. Yeah, a, a physical purification, like distillation. You know how they make high you know, alcohol. It's the same thing. It's a distillation process. Right. So when people get confused that, well, some, you know, some products may be carcinogenic. Well, it's not the C60 that's carcinogenic. It's the no. filtration process that's carcinogenic. Oh, yeah. And, and that's a good thing. Yeah. So, so, and, 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 and another thing that's important to realize is that during these filtration processes, there, these buckyballs, there are things like C60 and C70 and you know mm -hmm. larger molecules. And this is part of the reason why you want to filter it out because it's the C60 molecule that's the the secret sauce, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. You know, you don't want the C70, <laughs> you want the C60. So, you know, you have to go through these um, filtration processes and you want that very high purity level that you're talking about, which yeah, that's, yeah. this product has, <laughs> you know, and it's not just the the MCT, it's also the, the coconut. Yeah, and, and these are these are good, just good customer practice. Like one of the things here on all of our products, you'll see a little QR code. And that's uh, that's we got that from the, you know, because there's been so many problems and you can scan that in with your phone and it'll it'll give you because after we make our product, it goes to third party testing where they test for microbiologics to make it. It's so and, and purity of the C's concentration of C60. So, you know, it's safe and effective. And what we say is on the thing, you can see the third party testing confirms it. And there's also places where you can see the certificate of analysis. So that you know, like our olive oil is really farm sourced olive oil. It's not cut with canola oil and it's all organic. And the same with the uh, the avocado oil and the MC2 oil. And so just though these, and these are good, just good practices. We're not the only company that does this. And really it's just good practices that in the, if you're looking for a C60 supplier, whether it's us or somebody else, which we're C60 power or C60 purple power, just that you have these basics to know that you're getting a safe and effective product because they're just scammers out there. And we actually done, did a study and there, there is a, and, and, and we, uh, we work with other good C60 companies, but something like 60% of the C60 companies out there are just flat out lying to you about their products. 60%, you know, it used to be, it used to be none, but now it's 60%. Well, I think it's the, the problem here, Ken, is just that it's the supplement business in general. You have some really, really high quality providers. And then there is that, you know, the low quality providers. And unfortunately, the low quality providers brings down the high quality providers in the perception of the population. So they go, well, oh, D3 doesn't work. Well, D3 is really important for your health is, you know, if you did, and it's yeah. not just, and I think the key here is just that a lot of people think that it's just one thing that's like a magic bullet that's going to change their life, you know, but the reality is, is it's, it's tied to nutrition. It's tied to proper diet and exercise and balancing and progress. Oh, yes. You know, I mean, there's lots of studies, you know, where if someone isn't getting enough REM sleep, they're not detoxifying their body, not just, outside of their the central nervous system but you know inside yeah. the central yeah that's that's so, where it is yes you know so and you know and then you you know you couple some of these supplements these different types of supplements with c60 and you get this kind of added benefit just taking c60 does a does a lot i mean it's a very very strong antioxidant so you know maybe we should you know move in that direction ken and, okay. and you explain to the audience when someone takes c60 this you know the better filtrated sublimated c60 that that you and i offer um you know okay for the antioxidant capability of it you know yeah, yeah. what what will they ex what will they they get from that benefit well yeah first we antioxidants basically antioxidants says they're antioxidation so basically oxidative stress is your body rusting you get up in the morning and your joints are sore. You're kind of like the Tin Man. Literally, you're rusting in there, and that's what's causing the pain. And and then we know all about antioxidants. There's some xanthins, luantins, and all those other ones that you get from, uh, let's say, your your colorful fruits and vegetables, right? That's and those are those are endogenous. Though you get them from your diet, and they're all part an important part of your diet. 
And uh, you should be taking those as, along with a whole bunch of other good things in your diet, you know, the uh, stay away from those seed oils and other things. And there's, we could go, you know, there could be days of videos on that, but that's important. Then there's some endogenous uh, antioxidants your body makes itself. And some of those can be supplemented for. And I, I just basically, I just, I talk about like the main four main ones. And one is CoQ10. And uh, that is something you can supplement for. And definitely if you've got a little bit of gray hair, you should be supplementing for it. Because as we get older, you know, when you're young, everything's great. You feel great and that because your cells and your body makes a lot of antioxidants and, and you're young, right? Everything's working great. As you get older, production of anti endogenous antioxidants that your body makes goes down and, you know, problems develop. And, uh, and that's why we su you supplement to make up for the things that your body's not doing and uh, or, you know, the environment's not giving you. And so you can do CoQ10. And the other one is glutathione. And there was for a while there, it's there was some problems with glutathione supplementation, but they have some liposomals and various other ways that you can get glutathione in. And so it's, it's, it's something you can supplement for, and you probably should. And then there's two other, sup, two other an antioxidants you can't really supplement for. One is SOD, also known as superoxide dismutase, and catalase. And they work together to take care of the most damaging oxidative radical in the body called superoxide. And that's an oxygen with an extra electron. And if anything's going to cause rusting, that's going to be causing it. That's the ultimate oxidative, you know, damage one. And that's also produced a large part in your mitochondria because your mitochondria are little organelles in your cell and they produce ATP, the energy molecule of the cell. They're like little furnaces and they give off pollution. One of them is superoxide. And usually your body has SOD and catalase that work together to turn to neutralize that. Well, C60 does the job of both of those in one shot. And, and as we get older, you know, you get a little gray hair, that's pretty much a sign that your SOD catalase levels are going down. So you need to supplement for that. And before C60, there was nothing for that. Now, C60 is not SOD and it's not catalase. It's actually a mimic that does the job of both of those in one shot. And, uh, and so no, no, I'll just go like usually SOD, if you had superoxide, it's an oxygen with an extra electron. I'm going to talk a little sciencey here. What happens is SOD takes that and turns it in, takes that superoxide and turns it into hydrogen peroxide. And then catalase takes that hydrogen peroxide, turns it back into an oxygen and water. And that's what happens. C60 just basically, it's kind of unique. If you look at the cage-like structure behind it, it's the only molecule we know of in chemistry, which actually gets a positive charge not by giving electron into the environment, but by actually putting a positive hydrogen ion inside of its cage-like structure. And then it uses those positive hydrogen ions to neutralize things like S S superoxide dismutase. I mean, sorry, superoxide. And when the, you got the oxygen with the extra electron, it will stick to the positively charged C60. And then the C60 will literally take the electron, give it to one of the hydrogen ions, turning it into hydrogen gas. It lets the oxygen go back to the Krupp cycle going back to be regular oxygen. And then the C60 just pulls another hydrogen ion from the environment and resets itself. And its capacity to reset itself again and again and again without using the body's chemistry is why it's characterized as several hundred times more powerful than conventional antioxidants. Now, some antioxidant like SOD, when it interacts with superoxide, it's going to actually get deformed. And then you actually have to take an enzyme and some ATP and it kind of resets the SOD. It does the same for glutathione, CoQ10, catalase. These things happen, they gotta be reset and the body takes chemistry, right? It's gotta use ATP and enzymes to make that happen. C60 can do it all on its own. And they suspect that C60 was the original antioxidant of life because it's hydrophobic. That means it kind of re repels from water. So it floats on water's surface and it's made in large quantities by meteoric impacts. So there were literally, in the early earth, there were geologic deposits of C60 on the ocean, the shores of some ancient ocean. And the C60 is fat lipic. It means it attracts abiotically produced fats and amino acids and hydrogen gas. And so it had been the perfect scaffolding for RNA and DNA chemistry to exist. In fact, if you freeze RNA or DNA to a really, really, really cold, C60 would fit into the side groove of RNA or into the groove of RNA or the side groove of DNA. And, the, and, and there's some evidence to support this. You know, usually C60's, uh, C60's concentration is like, for they found in all the science research, is 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. And that's a pretty low amount, if you think about it, for those people. You know, that's 
thousandth of what you would imagine. Well, they took C60 up to one gram per kilogram of body weight and test animals. And that's like 5,000 to 10,000 times the, the health beneficial dose. And even at that level, that insane level, there was no toxicity. If you tried to do that with vitamin E and vitamin D, which are also antioxidants, that would have killed the organism. But C60 had no toxicity at all. And that's why they think it's the original antioxidant of life and that SOD and catalase were actually evolved by cells later to replace the missing C60 as you know the earth evolved over time. Right, right, right. You know, I think that I, for the ones that are sciencey, uh, what is interesting about organic chemistry, especially high levels of carbon, is is that the the um, the mechanism and um, the movement of the electrons. You know, it, it this is not a stick, even though it's circular and it's very strong it's a strong molecule right this is a, I'm, just by looking at the structure it's strong right yeah but there is a there is a there's a shimmering for lack of a better term uh it's been a while since i've had organic chemistry but 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 you know but but there's a shimmering when you when you actually are working out the the um the mechanisms of the electrons m moving around so even though it's a strong molecule, it is an active molecule. Yes. And, it's, and, and because, it's, it's this, because of this activity of the shimmering of the electrons amongst the other carbons, it, it has this bioreactivity re that lends itself to be able to soak up all these yeah. oxidants. And it, it only so, interacts with two, it's actually a, a cousin of diamond. It's an allotrope of carbon. And like diamond is an allotrope of carbon, fuller, the various fullerenes are allotropes of carbon, uh, graphene, graphite. They're just, you know, and even though they're totally different, you know, like, you know, gra graphite is black, right? And it's really soft. Diamond is, you know, clear and very hard. So even though they're made of exactly the same substance. So C60 only interacts with two oxidative radicals, superoxide, the most damaging oxidative radical in the body, and the hydroxyl ion and the hydroxyl ion is just basically a water molecule missing its proton so it has a free electron there and that's all c60 interacts with c60 doesn't interact with things like nitrogen oxides that's a vasodilator guys that's very important and uh so uh yeah you wouldn't want c60 to interact with that and that's methylene blue by the way interacts with nitric oxide so if you want a good woody guys don't be taking methylene blue and uh and so just so I'm not a medical doctor, I cannot give medical advice, but I'm a science researcher. So I can give you some, you know, kind of uh, kind of something on the side there. And, um, and and so that's that's all it interacts with. And so C60 does not interfere with any of the body's signaling molecules. And nitrogen oxide is one, hydrogen peroxide is another. There's a bunch of others based around sulfur and iron and zinc. And a lot of them are oxidative radicals. And, and in fact, see, that's also why C60 is the only oxidative, is the only antioxidant which can increase athletic performance. You know, they've done studies of vitamin C and vitamin E, which people take. And the problem is you need a certain amount of that. But if you take too much, then that actually interferes with the body's signaling molecules and athletic performance goes down. And they've done meta studies and they found that taking extra vitamin C and E will not improve athletic performance. But taking more C60 will, of course, above a certain level. In fact, we've had people that have gone from mid-pack in their fields to champions using C60. And right. NC60, by the way, is not banned by any athletic organization. We've actually talked with them and they will, they don't even re respond because it's, it's not a min mineral. It's not a nutrient. It's not a supplement. It's, it's not a vitamin. It's not a drug. It's, it's, it's like, it's its own crazy class. And I don't think their minds can grasp it. So it's still legal to take C60 in athletic performance. Well, what I have, you know, heard from customers, what they do is they take it on an empty stomach right before their workout and their recovery time after weightlifting or after a run is much quicker. Yeah. Which totally makes sense because now you've, you've loaded your body with an antioxidant and because you're exercising, you're going to start producing oxidants and yeah. it's up and it's your recovery is, is better so yeah that's that's a particular antioxidant because one of the things that happens is when you exercise a lot your mitochondria they just they can crank out a hundred times more atp than they normally do at resting literally and that means you're going to be producing a hundred times more 
uh, more superoxide. And it just literally overwhelms the uh, the ability of your body's ability, your cells' ability to deal with that. And it, that superoxide floods out into your cells and starts causing damage. And one yeah. of the worst nasties it makes, there's a, it combines with nitrogen oxide to make peroxynitrite. And that thing can travel a long distance. That's what gives you the sore muscles, that peroxynitrite. So if you were, the C60 stops the superoxide before, before, before making that nasty, then uh, then you don't get that DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. And yeah, and it's, that's one of the best things people love about C60, especially athletes, is you, you know, for instance, we had an anecdotal story. We had, you know, a couple of kids there uh, in college football, right? And they do spring training. And they just work them. They just brutalize them. You're in spring training, they brutalize them. And, uh, and uh, of course, usually people just lie and they get back and they're done. They're just lying around. They just, you know, anyway, they just try to recover for the next day. Well, these guys were taking C60, which they got from one of the guy's dads who was using it. And, and after 45 minutes to an hour, they'd be recovered and they go out on the night on the town, whereas everybody else, the whole team was just lying around suffering. And so that's another benefit of C60. It gives you a little bit more hours in your life. And eventually they asked them and they gave it, it gave it. And so the, uh, a lot of the people on the team and the coaches started taking C60. They didn't win the championship, though. It's a C60 can improve athletic performance, but you know, a lot, really a, lot start people, off with. <laughs> a lot of people don't realize that we have an amazing capacity to heal, mm -hmm. but that capacity to heal starts to go in reverse and we don't heal as fast. Um, and that, that, that in that inflection point is around age 35, age 30, depending on someone's lifestyle right? And genetics. But it's around that, that point where we have this amazing ability to regenerate, but then it starts to slow down. So once we hit about age 30 or 35, our capacity to heal starts to slow down. And there is an increase of this oxidation, right? So this is why I keep on saying that earlier you start on C60, the better off you are because there's this compounding benefit. It's like saving money in a bank in, in a way. Yes. yes. You know, because you wanted to reduce the, the oxidative damage in your 20s, right? So you have more runway of, you know, longevity and, and um, vitality, right? In your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, right? Oh yeah, and that's something that's something people and actually I would recommend people, not on my medical doctor and give advice, is to get like a uh, DNA testing. Get your epigenetic testing, get your DNA testing so you know what your vulnerabilities are, what your biological age is, and so that you can make choices when you're young. When you're young, in your 20s. In, I mean, I think every high schooler should, you know, should have DNA testing and and uh, epigenetic testing so they know what particularities because each one of us could you could have a particular you know allele set that maybe makes you you know like i i did mine and i like have no capacity to digest beans <laughs> you know you so you need those, so, yeah, <laughs> i do enjoy it and and you know and i have a few others i don't i don't process b vitamins as well as i should so i need to take more b vitamins and just as that you know and i have other good things i process vitamin d very very well and so well, that's it why I, why I, you know, when I, when I tell people how to, you know, improve the mitochondrial health, taking B1 through five helps with the electron transfer chain that's in the, the mitochondria. You couple that with the C60 to be able to soak up oh, all and those free particles and your, your mitochondria is like in supercharge. Yeah. And vitamin C, cause vitamin C is part of, part of the Krebs cycle chain. I mean, you need all of these things. The C60 is just one tool in the toolkit for good health. You, exactly. need, you need all of this stuff to make you good, but it's a really critical one because there's nothing else like it in that one section of dealing with SOD catalase because it'll take care of that. It also takes care of this, the uh, hydroxyl ion, which usually glutathione takes care of that. That's kind of glutathione's job. Glutathione has, of course, a dozen jobs. That's one of the jobs. So when you take C60, C60 takes care of that job of glutathione, which is one of its main jobs. So any remaining glutathione you have in your system can go to do other things that, that are critical as well, especially as we get older. And that's why, you know, supplementation like just CoQ10, glutathione, C60, these are just critical things. If you want to live a long, if you, you want a good health span, 
you know. Right. I think that's the key is, is it's not just about uh, extending your age, but it's it's about vitality. Oh, yeah. And th there's things like, for instance, in the American diet that are just not there, like iodine. Most people, unless you live on the seacoast and eat a lot of seafood, you don't have enough iodine. You should be supplementing for iodine. Magnesium, that's another one. Vitamin D3 and K, K, what is it, K1? K2? K2? MK7. MK, yeah, yeah. You need all of these things because they, they work vitamin, vitamin D, works with the K vitamins to do all that kind of stuff. You need all of this stuff, especially because, look, most people are living in buildings. You're not getting the sunlight you need especially in the wintertime you need, that's why people get sick in the wintertime because they're not getting the vitamin D they need to stay healthy. So, you know, you probably should put sun lamps up in your house and take supplementation, but, and these are simple things people can do just to improve your health. Right. You know, another thing that I don't think people realize is that heart disease, and they know this through autopsy data, right? <laughs> heart disease starts when you're about age 15. All right. And cardiovascular disease starts at eight, and it, it's yep. It's I'm, you're, I'm sure you know this this term yellow streak, the yellow streak in in the vascular system. Yes. So what happens is is that about age 16, individuals that will start to have inflammation in their vascular system and start getting this a yellow streak, and that's the very beginnings of the cardiovascular disease and the building of the plaques. All right. So building a plaque is based on foam cells, all right? So there's this inflammation that's taking place at the vascular level. So if you bring down that inflammation, right? And when you have inflammation, that's, you're dealing with free radicals too at the same time, right? It's not just pro-inflammatory cytokines, but it, there's these free radicals. So you bring that down, you're reducing those, the development of the, of the, of the plex. But what's interesting with the, with the foam cells is, is that you have these macrophages that go to this area that's inflamed, right? And there is a oxidative process of LDL. Well, if you can block the, the oxidative process of LDL, right, then you're reducing the foam cells and you're reducing the plaque buildup. Mm -hmm. And when you mix this stuff, which, this is the beauty of it. When you mix this stuff with like K2 and K7, you mix it with like uh, 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 vitamin D3, all right, because there's also calcium buildup that's, that's taking place in these plaques. So you're trying to get some of this calcium back into the bloodstream and not be deposited. So this, the, the D3, um, uh, the reduce blood glucose levels through ashwagandha, right? And turmeric to bring down those pro-inflammatory cytokines. When you mix this all together, you're actually slowly mimicking what they found with taking metformin k2 right to mm -hmm. reduce plaque in the carotid artery so you know because the metformin is very similar to ashwagandha right so you know that you can the point i'm making is is if i understanding some of the synergies of these things and taking it over a long period of time you're bringing down that inflammatory response you're bringing down that the, the, the free radicals, you're bringing down the, the, the blood glucose levels and you're allowing the body to slowly heal. The, the body will heal up to a certain point. And the earlier you do this, the better, because if you had, I mean, you can't tell like a teenager, don't eat pizza, right? You can't <laughs> yes. eat pizza. Or, you know, you know, hot dogs and hamburgers. But, but, but the thing is, is that the earlier you do this, you won't have that compound negative effect of the yellow streak that leads to blockage of arteries, that leads to high blood pressure, that leads to you know heart failure later down the road, right? So, and what's interesting is is that even during you know every war really uh, has huge advances in medicine, especially in surgery, and one of the big advances in in uh, heart surgery was during the Korean War, and when they were working on the soldiers in the Korean War, they started noticing that there was plaque buildup. Now you got to remember what was happening in the 50s that they didn't see in World War II in the 40s. And that is fast food. Oh, fast food oil. starts to come online sea after, after yeah. World War II, Right? And so some of these soldiers, you, they were starting to show 
cardiovascular disease in their early 20s during the Korean War, you know, when they were looking at the hearts. You know, we should be more they're... specifically fried foods. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's well, the yeah. thing, fast foods, yeah. fried foods. The well, same. right, 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 exactly, exactly. But, you know, and then, and, uh, you know, just looking at pictures today of, let's say, you know, individuals in the 1920s or 1930s, they're just so much thinner compared to oh, yeah. the it's, average it's, picture, you know, in, in yeah. a modern city in the United States. Yeah, you go to the Midwest, it looks like a cattle, a cattle herd. <laughs> or herd of I literally, swine, um, swine herd. you know, you you know, know. <laughs> I, everything is measured in tonnage now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just, I, it, it's sad because, you know, it just, huh. there's a lot of people, you know, they're trying you know, to, to like my bro, my brother, my, you know, he, as you know, my, my, uh, my, one of my brothers, they, he died from heart disease, but the, the surviving brother, um, you know, he's, he's gained weight over time, you know, and now he's, you know, struggling to try to lose it. Right. And, you know, he's got the high blood pressure. He's got the, you know, the diabetes, you know, he's taking all this medication. Right. And when he's trying to just, you know, walk and, you know, and watch, the diet and all that and it, it's been somewhat successful and he's you know losing weight but it's a struggle and i think a, a lot of people in america are that fall into this category where they fell into the trap of you know uh, uh food being comfort and they get bigger and then all of a sudden they start having health problems and then they realize that uh, you know they need to reverse course and it's hard for them to, to, to maintain so there's you know lots of ways you know, different ways to lose weight. You know, some people are taking medication to lose weight. I'm not sure if that's the best way to do it. But um, but the key here is, is just to realize that there is a compound effect on supplementation, but it's also dealing with lifestyle change. It's about eating right, staying away from, you know, the, you know, the fast foods. I mean, literally, when my brother died, his last meal was Chipotle. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Chipotle. I will not eat at a Chipotle because of that. Yeah, ever. It's, ever. It's, yeah, it's but just, his last it's, meal, it was a. It, 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 he had lunch. He had lunch, um, a later lunch, and and you know he had Chipotle, and then later in the day he wasn't feeling well, and he came home, and my parents came over to his house, and he he had a heart attack, but literally he his last meal was Chipotle, yeah, which I, mean, I guess you know is somewhat comical in a way, but. Maybe not, but, but, you know, I just, it, it's just, I, I don't eat fast food. You know, I just, I stay away yeah, from people it. People have to, yeah. People didn't understand, you know, the whole problem with trans fats and then, and, and the seed oils. And I mean, your body just, that's, and that's another thing that, by the way, the, getting your omega threes. I mean, our body's designed to eat maybe one omega six to one omega three. And right now it's like 50 omega, 50 to 20 omega sixes to omega threes. And and it's just, I mean, that's because the seed oils and other things in our diet. And it's just, and it, and that gets into your cellular, that gets into the, uh, into the, uh, the membranes of your cells and they don't work right because they got more omega sixes than omega threes. And, and, and it doesn't go away. So, I mean, really, if you're serious about it, you really just have to cut out almost all omega sixes and go totally omega threes because you're already filled with enough and you know, your body as it recycles, it's still going to use some of those old ones. So it's uh, there's various things you can do to accelerate that change, but uh, that plenty. And you don't I, even know that I and I, and I offer omega three on my store, <laughs> so you didn't even know. That was a yeah. Was people, people but, yeah, people just have to. I mean, but that's what the whole point is. You want a whole good diet. It's a C sixty. It's great. In fact, that's probably what we probably should start with because one of the reasons we're doing this is about all these these uh, these things people find articles about C sixty on the internet about C60 is bad or C60 is this. And, uh, and, and people should really understand, like, for instance, one of the key things about C60 is, uh, well, first off, if you ever want to know about C60, there's a really good website, what is C60.org. That's what is C60.org. And that's a 501c3. And we, our company and some other companies, good C60 companies sponsor them because like we can put, we can post human studies on our website, but we're not capable of posting animal studies or other associated studies be just by the nature of the way things are. But at whatisc60.org, 
as a 501c3, they can post whatever they want. And so you can go there and you can see all the studies, the, you know, the human studies, the animal studies, the other studies, and they have like a little synopsis next to them and a link. So if you want to look at that study yourself, you can go there and, uh, and get it. And like, for instance, one of the big key things is C60 only dissolves C60 has any health benefit, which is what we do. We dissolve it in an oil, right? And uh, that, but particles of C60 have no health benefit can actually be inflammatory. And, and so that's, that's some, so if you go out there and you say, oh, C60 is inflammatory. Well, it is, if it's particles, it's the same way with silica. Dissolved silica is really important for health, for teeth, for hair, for a variety of uses. But if I were to grind up glass is pretty much almost all silica. If I was to grind up a bunch of glass into nanoparticles and give it to you, uh, the results would be kind of bad because it's not dissolved. And it's the same way with C60. Particles of C60 have no health benefits. And you can read about I, that. What is C60? I just want to make sure that the audience that isn't scientifically inclined and, and you know, and they're new to supplementation. What Ken is saying is, is that a powdered form that's not dissolved in a lipid like avocado oil or vegetable oil or the, the coconut oil, yeah. then that that powder could harm you yeah. and sometimes these studies will be designed in such a way where they're trying to convince the public that c60 is bad but they're not telling you the full story and oh, that yeah. is they're not they're not administering it in a lipid form oh, they're yeah, administering that's... in a powdered form mm -hmm. or they're doing other things like for instance you know, C60 is, it's an antioxidant. And if you leave it in sunlight, it can photo oxidize the oil that it's in, right? It's the same way. And that's why, like, if you look at pretty much every C60, you notice the bottle is brown, really dark brown. Well, it's dark brown for the same reason beer bottles are dark brown. Or, or wine, right? Yeah, exactly. Because light right. will oxidize the, uh, the, the oil, especially if C60 is in it. And then it goes rancid and, you know, or it can do that to your beer or your wine. And so that's why they put it's put in dark bottles. And they did a study, for instance, where they uh, it's an industry hit piece. If you actually look at who paid for it, Big Pharma. And uh, and they basically so they left out C6 to put C60 in a clear glass bottle and gave it the equivalent of like three weeks of sunlight. And, and C60 is and and it turned the oil rancid. In fact, the C60 will combine with those rancid products and sink to the bottom of the uh, of the container if you leave it like in that kind of sunlight that kind of light level and then so there's really no in a clear, in a clear, in a clear bottle. bottle that's right it's a clear bottle with high levels of blue and uv light right that's right. going to cause the same way if you set in the sun for you know two weeks straight you would probably have a pretty severe you know sunburn and then and then they gave it to these these mice that were very sensitive to oxidative to rancidity in oils and the mice got sick and uh, some of them developed cancers, which was to expected, you know, so that they knew that that would do that. And the other part of the study, they said, like they had the study I talked about how C60 increased the lifespan of mice by 11%. And, uh, and, and that because they gave C60 to the mice every day. In this other study, they gave the mice C60 once every two weeks and it didn't increase their lifespan. And, and and then they said, well, C60 doesn't increase the lifespan of mice. No, that's scientific fraud. You know, when, if you're going to say this experiment was wrong, you have to do exactly the same as the other experiment. You can't give it to them. Oh, and by the way, those mice were a special type of mice. They're hybrid mice where they take two types of mice, they breed them together, and their chromosomes dissolve at about 30 in mice years. So C60 or anything else would have not helped those mice at all when your chromosomes dissolve because they're hybrid mice who are known for chromosome dissolving. They use them in scientific studies. So, I mean, you can also go to what is C60.org and you can read about the uh, that whole study and you can see exactly the fraud that was going on there. And so, you know, so there are industry hit pieces. There are the the stuff about particles of C60 and uh, and people just need to know. I mean, you can you can go to what is C60.org. You can look at the stuff, but you know, they, and the human studies are pretty good. I mean, or human cell lines, a lot of studies you do, you can't do with humans because of ethical concerns. So they'll do human cell lines in vitro or in the test tube, basically. And so like, uh, 
they did a study of neuroprotective ability of C60. They basically put human nerve cells in the test tube and then they gave one set of the test tubes, gets the C60, the control group doesn't get any. Then they exposed them to a variety of neurotoxins and the nerve cells that had C60 resisted damage from those nerve toxins, whereas the control group, of course, got damage. And so they, they've seen that and they did the same with skin cells and a variety of other human cells. Yeah, it's important to mention to the audience, the ones that don't know, that our neurons, because of these neurotransmitters being, you know, shot out, it needs a lot of ATP. Neurons have a lot of mitochondria to get this high level of ATP. So when you start to have these dendritic recessions where the neurons aren't really connected very well as we age, your neurotransmitters start to shoot slower. And that part, part of the reason it's not the only reason, but part of the reason is, is that the mitochondrial health in the neuron is diminished when we get older. Well, this is more reason to start thinking about lifestyle change and supplementation to improve the mitochondrial health. Because what will happen is by improving that mitochondrial health, by taking B-complex, by you know doing this, this, the C60 protocol, then what will happen is, is that your health of the mitochondria will start to improve allowing for the neurotransmitters to shoot off. Now, if you create an environment that allows for growth factors between these dendrites, then what will happen is, is they'll start to reconnect because the ne neurotransmitters are firing on, right? Yes. And then, you know, and then what will happen is, is that you'll have, um, you know, more clarity, your cognition, memory will, will you know, will improve. Um, so, you know, there is this, this is where that kind of like that anti-aging kind of part of it is, but it's not just taking the supplement. It's also like you have to create a, a condition where there is growth factors. And part of that is a little bit of exercise, challenging the brain, reading, talking to people, people that don't talk at all. And they just stay at home and just stare at the TV, but literally the brain <laughs> yeah. is, is atrophy. Yeah, right. It's it's atrophy. Exactly. So, you know, so there's. And that's the part of the reason why, you know, women that have better social networks usually live longer after their, you know, their spouse dies because men have a tendency to have less social networks as we grow older while women maintain their social networks. So, uh, you know, so talking actually per, it slows down these dendritic recessions that I'm talking. So, you know, it's, it's, this is why it's like so important to pay attention to bringing down that oxidative load, because if you don't, over time, it builds up and it causes more and more damage. And it's not linear. It's nonlinear. Just like you don't really realize that heart disease is happening when you're 16 years old, but you will realize it when you're 40, right? It's, it's a nonlinear event that, 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 that starts to happen. Right. Yeah, but at 40, it's, it's kind of hard. I mean, that's the key thing. If you get it early, you get it young. Right. I mean, the earlier you start this stuff, the better your long-term results will be. Because if you start fighting heart disease at 20, you're not right. going to have it at 40. Exactly. And these like studies dealing with mice, right? Let's just say that they didn't, you know, have chromosomal instability mice, as you were talking about. Let's just say they had garden variety wild type mice or whatever. All right. All right. Mice in best situation they last for 24 months they usually die before that all right independent as a control they don't do you know you don't do anything to them they naturally die in about 24 months all right they don't they don't live for very long all right if you're giving something an antioxidant to something that doesn't live for very long only every two weeks to in human years it's like taking C60 maybe once every six months, you know, yeah. you know or once a quarter or whatever, yeah. you know. So, so, so the thing, the people need to realize that it, you know, that in that animal model, they would have had to give in multiple doses a day for that mouse years to, to be equivalent to human years. So that even, even, so people need to be, need to recognize that, the design of the experiment sometimes dictates the results, especially if they're trying to do a hit piece. 
And oh, yeah. so you have to be discerning, you know, and like go, well, wait a minute here. Who's who's sponsoring it? Who's, you know, who's you know, is big pharma saying that something, you know, that they're they're their big pharmaceutical product that's sold for a billion dollars for, for cancer is a better solution than, than trying to prevent, you know, you know, to prevent a disease from, you know, emerging. So it, it's I just yeah, that needs to be more discerning. Yeah, that is a good point. And, uh, and another thing, yeah, I'd always thought, you know, like nerve cells, for instance, are literally 50% by volume mitochondria. And uh, I'd also, and, and that's where C60, because C60 passes the gut barrier, passes the blood brain barrier, taken into the cells by endocytosis, taken into mitochondria endocytosis, where they, where they know how to use, the mitochondria know how to use it. And, uh, but the other thing I actually discovered, I, well, I learned is uh, that the cells of the endocrine system also have high levels of mitochondria, even higher than nerve cells. I always thought nerve cells were number one, but evidently the cells of the endocrine system are actually number one. Well, I thought it was, in, I thought it was in the neurons. I didn't yeah, know. That. So did I. I don't know. I, 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 study, they said, well, there's more. I go, what? I, I could hardly believe that. But you know, those those uh, endocrine cells, you know, those glands work pretty hard producing all the different things. So that's another cell type that C60 helps. So when you take C60, it restarts the uh, the mitochondria in your endocrine system. And in your endocrine system, the mitochondria, mitochondria just don't do ATP. They have other jobs. And especially in the endocrine system, they make pregnenolone, which is the precursor molecule for all the hormones. And so if your and if your pregnenolone levels go up, then you're going to make more of whatever hormone. So it doesn't just happen, you know, so when you're going to get more melatonin in your pineal gland, you're going to get more H in your pituitary hypothalamus, you're going to get more human growth hormone. And then the master, the dozens of other master molecule or master things produced there. You're bringing a great point. And that is that as we age, our endocrine system starts to be not as functional as it should be and also because of modern lifestyle endocrine disruption you know people don't realize that our environment is disrupt disrupting our endocrine system and because that is happening our health is starting to decline because that all these different axes between the pituitary and you know the hypothalamus and the pituitary you know secreting you know certain types of hormones to let's say the thyroid or the uh the adrenal glands or even, you know, some of our sex organs, you know, that these things, if they're out of homeostasis, your health will start to decline. So if you can try to prevent that, if you can slow that endocrine disruption down by a, a, a myriad of things, you know, supplementation, proper diet, right? Then you are getting back to homeostasis because your endocrine system is 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 you know yeah. more robust. And, and this I is think people don't pay attention to their endocrine system. You know, it's it's and you know it's about you know boosting up the immune system, improving the endocrine system, bringing down that you know those free radicals uh, and staying away from that plastic because the plastic yeah. makes those BPA and other products leach out of the plastic into your food, into your water, and those are hormone, they're estrogen mimics, and they don't just they they they. they yeah, they're not just mimics, they can also jack up, you know, the receptors. And so that's one of the problems that people have now is all of these hormone bending chemicals in the uh, in the water and the food that they eat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they were they were doing, I don't know if you watch it, but the 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 ocean race around the world for 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 uh, the sail ocean race. I, I've I, seen it. I have watched the latest ones. Well, they did. They they. I, I think the circuit ended last summer. I think it was last summer, I think. And I think it's every two years or yeah. it's not. Yeah, because so, it takes a year to get around here. So, so they were doing an experiment and they were looking. So they, as they're traveling around the world, they're taking water samples from different oceans, oh. right? And they're, they, they send them back to the labs once they get back to the port. And they're doing um, microplastic analysis. Right. And it's just over time, our oceans are just being filled with microplastics, you know, because it's a, it's like we have actually a continent of plastic in the middle of the Pacific Ocean that people don't know about because of the current. You know, I just we got we have a big garbage can in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, you know, and these plastics start to degrade and, and these small 
these small bits and pieces start to, to float around the whole world. And they can actually measure this. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a real problem. We're uh, po poisoning our own well. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I just, I, I think we've covered, you know, some of the concerns that maybe people had. Yeah. Well, there's one more I think to talk about because we were talking about hormones and yeah. this is the counterindication. If you're on a blood thinner, you should consult with your doctor before taking C60 because one of the things that C60 does, as we mentioned, it restarts the hormones and the, the endocrine system. And one of the endocrine systems is the mineral corticoids, which are which regulates blood pressure or blood thickness, sorry, blood thickness. And so if you're on a blood thinner, and you take C60, the underlying cause of why your blood is, quote, thick can go away. And if you're on a blood thinner, now your blood is too thin. So you need to consult with your doctor before taking C60 just to get more testing primarily. And uh, to a certain extent, that's with hormone things, but it's not as critical there. For instance, the typical case, we had a seven-year-old. He's got, uh, he went to his doctor. He wasn't feeling, you know, kind of feeling uh, not energetic enough. And he, doctor tested him out. His, his, uh, testosterone was 350, right? Which is kind of low. So the doctor gives him some creams and it pushes his level up to 700. And then he starts taking C60. He goes into his, uh, his doctor a few months later and his testosterone level is 1200. So the doctor backs him off on the creams because mm -hmm. the, the testosterone comes from androgens, which are produced in your adrenal glands because your adrenal glands produce three main things. Glutocorticoids, which regulate your blood sugar. Mineral corticoids, which regulate your blood thickness or blood function in that sense, the mineral balance there, buffering. And then the androgens, which are converted by whatever sex organs you have into progesterone, estrogen, or testosterone. And so when you take C60, all of those levels are going to go up. And that's another side effect of C60 is an increase in libido. So watch out for that if you start taking C60. Well, what is interesting is that I knew someone that uh, had to take insulin because uh, they 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 had Hashimoto's and they also through Hashimoto's you can also have the uh, it attacking the, mm -hmm. the pancreas right so they weren't producing enough insulin so they had to take insulin now um, what was interesting is that by taking C60 because they're always checking their I mean when you're a diabetic you're always checking your blood and they noticed that by taking C60, that they didn't need to take as much insulin. Because if you take too much insulin, then you yeah. go hypoglycemic, right? So they could back off. So people need to kind of, this is, this, this is like the beauty of this. If you monitor your health with your doctor, right? You can in many times, not always, but many times actually reduce the amount that you need from allopathic medicine because it's your body is now starting to go back to what it used to do may not go back all the way so if you need insulin let's say for for example and you're taking a supplement that you now you don't need to take as much units of insulin right well that's a good thing because your endocrine system is kind of coming back online right so you know you know, just keep that in mind. I think I think that's a great point. Is is that there has to be, you know, there is this kind of dual dual thing with allopath, especially if you're elderly and you're on a bunch of medication. You know, you know, seeing your doctor, paying attention to what type of medication you're on, but that if you are now just starting to get into supplementation, then you know you monitor it very closely, and in many cases. In many cases, you can dial back some of the some of these things that you're taking allopathically, um, and and you got to remember that a lot of times these allopathic pharmaceuticals they have side effects. So if you're taking less, that means you're reducing the chances of the side effects. Yeah. So there, I, I've always believed in this this kind of complementary medicine. You know, there's you know there's the purists, only seeing MD, you know, types. Or yeah, oh, and then there's the other purists on the other side of the spectrum. Only see naturopathic. Yeah, I I don't fall in that. I, I think that there's a there's a complementary of both, right? You know, and there's there's benefits to both to both. And if you can find that that magic blend, then then I think you got the right 
the right solution. These absolutists on either side yeah. of the of the of the spectrum, I think, um, you know, you know, it, it may not be the best for the patient. I think, but I I think you're you're bringing a great point because this whole endocrine system, as the, as we get older and as it's getting disrupted, um, you know, people maybe for two decades, you know, they're used to this disrupted endocrine system problems with, you know, you know, with their libido, for example, or problems with energy, or maybe they have too high a cortisol levels or whatever it is. Right. And then all of a sudden they start to do supplementation, whatever it is. And then their body is starting to get back to the way it used to be when they were younger. And then, you know, they have to readjust because, well, you know, in a way, in a way by, at least at the endocrine level, you're, you're you're moving back in time you you know you're it is, getting absolutely. healthier that's, and getting healthier and you, yeah, that's, you just dial yeah. back that that medication that, that you're yeah, so some women it in has the, to be monitored by a doctor yeah some women in the almost the perimenopause phase may go backwards with c60 to an earlier time that is yeah. another uh another thing and have, we've have, applied, you, have you heard anything about postmenopausal? Uh, sometimes they've gone back to perimenopausal. So uh, if they're on the edge there and, yeah. and a large number of babies have also fertility increases hugely with uh, C60. So that's uh, well, maybe more of the can't recommend <laughs> issue there. <laughs> exactly. There's a couple of slashes for that yeah, one. It may not be anything about the yeah. woman. I mean, yeah. it's about the guy. Yeah. <laughs> but another thing we need to th talk about is also C60 increases stem cell levels. And this is actually because, you know, C60, it's, they only started researching this in the 2000s and even that was slow right and so this this came from one of the research they did with rabbits they gave uh they gave rabbits arthritis because that's what they do in science experiments and then they gave the and then they injected c60 into the joints to uh to obviously fight the inflammation caused by arthritis and you know lo and behold that actually happened which wasn't expect which was was expected right obviously c60 is an antioxidant it's uh it fights inflammation so if you put it into arthritis in rabbits, well, then it would be surprising. But when they actually opened up, they sacrificed the rabbits and looked at the joints, they found that the cartilage had regrown, which was an unexpected side effect. And then there's been some more research that, and what they find out is C60, all throughout our bodies, we have these cells, they're called senescent cells. You could think them of as zombie cells. And these cells have damage, usually it's DNA damage, but there's other damages. And usually there's mechanisms in the cell itself or in the body to get rid of these cells. But a lot of them just hang on. They don't want to die. And they call become, quote, senescent cells. And what's happened is our normal cells, when we're breathing, we breathe oxygen because we use the Krebs cycle, right? We're oxygen burners. Well, senescent cells go back into the fermentation mode, kind of like the primitive mode that existed before, you know, we became oxygen breathing. And cancer cells are like that, too. They go in this fermentation mode. And, uh, and so they're just basically burning sugars into alcohols. Now, one of the problems is this is, you know, they're producing alcohols and other pro-inflammatory uh, toxins, which are poisoning the cells around them. And by, one of the ways they do that is they stop providing antioxidants to the mitochondria. So the mitochondria cannot go into the Krebs cycle, primarily SOD catalyst. That goes away. And so the mitochondria, which are actually ancient symbiotic bacteria, they have to go in the fermentation mode too. So the whole cell's in the fermentation mode. When you take C60, C60 is uptaken by senescent cells and where it goes into the mitochondria and restarts the Krebs cycle. That means those mitochondria start burning oxygen again, making ATP. And they have their own DNA and they work symbiotically with the cell. And so when that happens, they will send messages to the nuclear DNA of the senescent cell and they will not get the right message back and then the mitochondria blow themselves up basically and cause apoptosis or programmed cell death where the cell breaks down into apoptotic bodies, which by the way is non-inflammatory. The body has set this up so it's not inflammatory. It just kind of break down. And so when people take a lot of C60, it causes a, a large de decrease in senescent cells. And correspondingly, it causes a great increase in stem cells because once your tissue or organ no longer has as many cells as needed, the body knows that. And so it sends messages, hey, we need more stem cells. And stem cells are like baby cells. They can go into whatever tissue or organ there is and differentiate into like a kidney cell 
or in some cases, a thyroid cell. We've had a lot of people like on Hashimoto's, zero Hashi function of the thyroid for like 20 years, right? They start taking C60 and after let's say six months to a year, they, they're they off like a third of their thyroid medicine. Mm -hmm. That's and then it gets to like a half and then it gets to three quarters. And the thing that people need to realize that with these types of diseases like Hashimoto's, it's an attack of the, it's, it's, it's an attack of the tissue by the immune system. Well, yeah. and many of these patients will also have this attack on the pancreas yeah. and therefore they have to be on insulin or mm -hmm. lipases or other enzymes that are secreted, you know, by the, yeah. by the pain. Yeah, because C60 so, is known to just, just to reduce autoimmune situations. So it's going to reduce the inflammation, the autoimmune thing. But over time, it also rebuilds this because there's all kinds of senescent cells in the thyroid or perhaps even the pancreas or the kidneys. And then C60 goes in there, it wipes out those senescent cells. They're replaced by stem cells. And the stem cells have full functionality because they're baby cells. Then they become a new thyroid cell, right? Then they can start working the way that's supposed to be. And so that's what we think is what's going on. Is that because this happens over a long period of time? This is like six months to a year. And by the way, like when my macular degeneration went away and Gary's went away, it took it, it was seven months before I went to see the eye doctor. Now, when it actually went away, I don't know. But with Gary, because he was had severe wet macular degeneration and he was going like in every month to you know or every two months to you know to get his stuff, we know for sure what was happening, and that took over a year. So this is like a long-term effect there. So there's these long-term effects you get from C60 where literally organs are rebuilt. And like we had a lady, she had a 30% uh, loss of her kidneys and her nephrologist told her, oh, it's just going to get worse until, you know, you need to have a kidney transplant. Well, she takes C60, she goes in three or four, made it, three or four, three or four months later to see her nephrologist and she has 100% kidney function. The nephrologist can't understand it. You know, it's supposedly so, so you think that what's happening is it's like the glomerulus and, and you know some of the tube tubes. Yeah, you know, I think they're literally being that are actually regenerating. Yes, that's it's going to be because it regenerated. You know, the optic nerve is what is in, uh, and the optic nerves, of course, are full of mitochondria because the optic nerve is part of the brain, and so literally it rebuilt the optic nerve, but it took a while, and it's probably re the nephrons are also full of mitochondria because they do a lot of work. I mean, any cell type, that, like muscle cells, heart cells, they got a lot of mitochondria. So any cell type with a lot of mitochondria will uh, will have uh, will have uh, you know benefits. Like we we did a study once on, and uh, it was on because uh, a lot of people said that their cataracts were going away. They had light cataracts and it was going down, and so we actually sponsored and did a scientific. We got a research PhD. It was approved by this the medical board of Colorado, and everything was through, and it was it was a full science study. And, and, and all the participants, we found that all of the participants, it was done by an optometrist was doing, all the part participants improved their vision, but it wasn't because the, the, the uh, cataracts went down. There wasn't much change in the cataracts, maybe a little bit, but really not much because the cells, the lens, the cells of your lens have very few mitochondria and they turn over very slowly. So the chances of that really having an effect, but the optic nerve is like half mitochondria because they're nerve cells. And so that's how we kind of discovered, that's our part of discovering, you know, the whole thing with the mitochondria is literally because it's any cell type with a lot of mitochondria. So you're talking nerve cells, cells of the endocrine system, other tissue types like the kidneys and liver. And you know, the liver, so right. The other cell types, you know, that don't have a lot of mitochondria, not as much uh, benefit there. So, and that's also part of the whole, we're not the only ones that did, but we contributed to the whole understanding how C60 increases mitochondria function because, you know, cells, any cell type with a lot of mitochondria is where you're going to get the most C60 benefit. Yeah. See, what I've noticed is like there seems to be a syner synergistic effect with resveratrol and NMN. Oh, it should. It, because all and, those. And, and they're, all they're all attacking it from a slightly different vector, but it, it's like, it's like a supercharge to improve that mitochondria. I, I like to say it in an analogy that a lot of people can understand. It's like, it's a car. Imagine your body's the car, right? Or your cell is the car. Well, C60 is like the radiator fluid. So, you know, if you have your radiator topped off, it keeps, you know, the inflammation down. It keeps the heat down. But if you're running a car, you still need the engine oil, you know, to keep it all the parts move. You need the fuel, good fuel, you know, high premium fuel to make that thing run. Hell, you'd even need, you know, air in the tire and windshield washer fluid 
to make sure everything's working. And so, you know, C60 has, has is, it's one thing, but it's very important. You need all these other things. So you still got to have the good diet. You still got to get the sleep. You still got to get the exercise. You got to do, I mean, as you get older and you want good health, it takes a lot of effort. It will not happen. There is no magic pill out there. And if you think you're going to find a magic pill, it's not going to happen. You have to do multiple things. And the older you get, the more you have to do. Another thing that I personally have found, I'm not giving medical advice, is intermittent fasting. That has been one of the most beneficial things I've found for my health, first in losing weight and just improving general health. And I'm on the 18-hour plan, where I basically fast for 18 hours and eat a couple of meals within that six-hour window. And uh, I found that stuff's done incredible improvements in my health. So are you cutting out carbs or are you doing? I, yeah, I cut out a lot of carbs, not all carbs. I've cut out the trash carbs, like out of bread and other things like that. I, trash carbs have got alcohol. You have to give that alcohol up. Uh, and, you know, certain levels of meat, you know, I probably eat more fish rather than red meat. You know, these are other things. And so it just, I just found that that's a really, that's that's one of the benefits. Because I, I, I would diet and I would only go down to a certain level, right? And it was just stuck there, which was way higher than I should be. And then when I intermittent fast, it punched right through. And I was, I'm now I'm down in the areas that, uh, you know, what I was in high school, the weight. And, you know, sometimes a guy, you know, Christmas comes by or other holiday periods, you go on a vacation, it goes up and then you have to push back down. It's the pumpkin pie. It goes up. Yes, exactly. It's it's, you know, that's, that's what's going to happen. But, you know, you can, at least you can get down to where you should be, you know, you know, and, it, and, 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 and also just do it one step at a time. If you're going to this, don't do like the radical diet change and all this other stuff. Oh, I'm going to run three miles. No. Just walk around the block <laughs> and then walk around a couple of blocks, then walk around three blocks. Don't try and, you know, change your diet here. Cut this thing out. Cut that thing out. Shorten it. You know, don't go for an 18 hour note without eating. Just go to, let's say, 12 hours. And then, you know, just, just. So with the intermittent fasting, how, how many calories per day do you think you're consuming? Well, I don't really know. I don't even, I don't really count. I've found, I've actually done this because I'll eat, you know, the same meals. And I found that I will because I monitor my weight and my blood pressure and a bunch of other things, I found that I will eat the exact same meal, but in, let's say, a 10-hour window, and I will gain weight. And then I will eat that exact same meal in the six-hour window, and I will not gain weight. The exact same meal, the exact same level of calories. So there's there's something about the not just the amount that you eat, but the time in which you eat it. And I've done that myself because, you know, that scientists, you know, experiment on ourselves. That's kind of the way things go. And and so I I just, I, you know, I saw it anecdotally and then I decided, oh, I'm going to experiment and do this correctly. And yeah, it's 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 bizarre. But so you could eat the exact same calories and in that six hour window and lose weight, whereas you eat them in a 10 hour window and you gain weight. There it is. Well, I, you know, it, it you know, dissecting a little bit, if you had a continuous glucose level in the blood. Right. So, you know, the moment that your glucose starts to get into your cell, you just let's mm -hmm. just say this theoretically, mm -hmm. you know, you put another glucose mo molecule into the bloodstream. Right. And you just had continuous blood glucose level, which that's not what happens. But let's just say you did that. Then what most likely would happen is, is that one would gain weight. Mm -hmm. So intermittent fasting to me seems as though it's this bringing down the glucose level enough to think that the body is now needing to burn the triglycerides that are in the adipose tissue. Yes. Uh, and, yeah. and slowly what happens is, is that it starts to shrink those fat cells little mm -hmm. bit by little bit by titrating the triglycerides, the fatty acids into the bloodstream, and then eventually they're turning it into energy sources in the liver, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's one thing. Another thing I noticed is my digestion hugely improved when I went to this. And I'm thinking it because look, look, let's, let's look at your average American, right? They get up at six, seven in the morning. They eat a breakfast, right? Maybe crappy cereal, right? Then they go to lunch. They eat lunch. They go home, maybe get have, have you know, the dinner maybe late. And then they're sitting around watching TV, eating things. Well, you know, you're, you've got, you know, your digestive system, that digestive system is working 18 hours a day, maybe 20 hours a day. It doesn't get a break. If you went out and worked 20 hours a day, you'd be exhausted. Well, you're making your digestive system work that, and and maybe it's exhausted. 
And so when I, you know, I'm only eating that six hour window. So maybe I'm on my digestive system's only working eight hours a day. And I think that my ability to digest things went way up. I mean, because I, I noticed that that was that like, huge. And I was already taking C60 and all this stuff. So it wasn't that. And I think what happens is if you give your pancreas a, a break, you give your dodeum a break, you give your the small intestines a break so they can sit there and sleep or, or, you know, rest and recover and, you know, just don't work them, don't work them 20 hours a day, work them eight hours a day. And just like if you will work eight hours a day, you're going to be much more productive and healthy uh, rather than 20 hours a day. I think it's the same with the digestive system. Right. And if you just do the mind experiment, and I had this conversation with my brother that's trying to lose weight. We were a, a species that had to go and hunt, right? We didn't have Kroger's mm -hmm. around the corner or, you know, some yeah. sort of mega, you know, grocery store to go to, right? So there were times where there was this, where you didn't have really a fuel source and you're just, you're just using what you stored, right? So the body isn't, the body wasn't designed to have high levels of glucose constantly, nor was the intestine designed to constantly be breaking down mm -hmm. material, right? And this, you know, this makes a lot of sense that, you know what, you know, when you have, if you eat more, most likely more polyps will start to arise because there's just, there's more stress on that, that lining in the gut where in the, in the crypt, you know, for the, the gut, you know, some sort of precancerous cell starts to emerge and then all of a sudden a polyp starts and, you know, and then it can get really dangerous if it's not removed, you know, it's just that there is, there is, you know, some logic to the idea of, you know what, if we move, go back to the way we were seven, eight, 10,000 years ago, you know, when we were hunting mastodons or whatever, you know, you know, that, that, you know, that, uh, you know, most likely we'd be a lot healthier. Plus those, that society walked a lot, you know, it wasn't like they, they got out of their tent and, you know, <laughs> shot a bow and arrow at a buffalo, right? They no, had to no, no. walk, you know, like far to go well, find the buffalo. It's like the Maasai, that uh, tribe in Africa that herds cattle. Yeah. Virtually no heart disease. They're the really tall guys. You've probably seen them on TV, yeah. really tall guys. They do the jumping thing and they herd the cows. They drink cow blood, you know, cow milk, which is not the best diet. And yet they have no heart disease because they get up in the morning and they get out of their hut and they walk with the cows all day long because they're herding them, right? That's their livelihood. So they herd them out to the fields, right? And they're herding them around to make sure they keep them predators away, herding them back at night. So they just walk all day long and they really don't have any heart disease, even though they're they're eating milk fat, right? Huge amounts of milk fat, and uh, and also uh, and also they drink the blood, and you know, occasionally they'll get a wild animal, but uh, they're mostly living off, you know, what would be quote not that healthy, but but they don't get heart disease because of that just constant exercise. And I'm willing to bet that by that by you doing the intermittent fasting, that that problematic joints have gone away. Oh yeah, there's no, there's yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's inflammation. Like it's just constantly feeding the body mm -hmm. at these high glucose levels. It's 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 pro-inflammatory, and it's it, it'll. It, this is part of the reason why when people get older, their joints don't work right, and they're just they they they're, they're sluggish. They don't you know they they just want to sleep, or they just turn on the TV and eat another TV dinner or whatever, you know. <laughs> And I, it just, it, if you move the body more like it used to be thousands of years ago, instead of, you know, in, in the realm of, you know, modern, the modern day man, right? Woman, yeah. you know, the body will, there, there's a the capacity of healing, even in the fifties and sixties years of age. It's pretty phenomenal. The, the way the yeah. body regenerates. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah. And that's just, I mean, people, I think the number one thing that the worst thing I think is television. Yeah. Is television, you know, first off, when people watch the flickering rate, it literally puts their mind in like a uh, alpha state, it goes out of beta to alpha or theta. And they're just like, their brain stops, you know, your brain doesn't, you're, you're not exercising your brain anymore. You're not talking, you're, you're literally, your brain is like zombified and your body is zombified because you're just sitting there. And I think, you know, I think the advent of television for the destruction of human health is one of the the biggest things of all 
if you know people if they just get through on i haven't had television for 30 years right i just don't own any televisions i have computer screens but you know i read my news i don't watch it you read it through electronic device or do you read it like in the paper or oh i don't read the papers anymore they're so bad if oh, occasionally i have things magazines delivered that are actually worthwhile and worthy of being read but you know the the, the local rags here are just so bad that uh, so I just go to I go to various blog sites that uh, news ag aggregators and just, you know, choose yeah. what I'm going to read. So I choose what I read. And I and when you're reading, of course, that's that's a whole nother thing. You know, our, our brains, you know, I think there's a, a mental the difference between people that do not read or people who cannot read, who can read and do not read. There's no difference between a literate person and a person who can read and doesn't read. I think there's there's a total intellectual change in the brain of people that read. It's and, and it's, I think that's true. And the and, sad thing was when my father ended up getting dementia, Ken, he was such an avid reader. Mm -hmm. You know, it was and you could see that we really thought he was going to be a centurion. I mean, he was healthy, he walked all the time, he didn't run, he didn't lift weights or anything, he just walked, he mm -hmm. ate his green beans and you know, he read all the time and he just looked like he didn't, but he had ischemic dementia, you know, he had the, you know, some blood flow for the ones that don't know what ischemic dementia is, is that the blood flow was, was uh, reduced and yeah, our arteries it arteries started to shrink and he's in, oh. and it went fast and it was fast. Yeah. That's, that's unfortunate. Yeah. That's, that's the, yeah, that's, well, there's those, I mean, we all have our expiration dates, but the key is that, to, you know, and that's the thing. If we get this stuff early, if you start in your twenties or thirties, if you're listening out there and you're young, you know, the sooner you start a good, healthy lifestyle and, you know, all the other things we've talked about, the longer you're going to be around and the healthier and better you're going to feel during those old, you know, those ages when you can get up there. Because, you know, you know, I, there's people my age that I like, it's really kind of depressing if you ever go back to a high school reunion or to a certain extent, a college reunion. I mean, you'll just see, you know, I'm pretty fit and healthy and reasonably going. I mean, I'm just I'm still going right. It's just not most, but some people, I think it's, it's just, it's kind of, it's kind of scary. You know, it looks like, who are these people? <laughs> now, my, you know, my brother, you know, the surviving brother is, you know, he falls in that, that category where he looks a lot older than he is. Mm -hmm. you know? and, and maybe it's because, you know, family stress and, you know, he's. Oh God. Yes. We all, you know, know, and, we you know it's stuff. the diet and it's, you know, he's, he, he's an ortho, he's orthodox Jew. And so, you know, it's the, that, that lifestyle and the types of foods that they eat on a regular basis for yeah, shopping did, yeah. for, for the holidays, very high calorie diets. And, you yes. know, I, I would say that his comfort food is, is bread. Yeah, you know? I know bread is just, bread is not, yeah, no, we are, we are, we are not designed to eat bread. No. Uh, that's just something that that's like B grade food. And originally, I, I have only have two pieces of bread a week. Yeah. You know, they actually discovered that, you know, the reason people started gr brewing or growing grain was for brewing beer. Really? Yeah, that's what they, they found. Yeah, the pots, the earliest pots, and they discovered, they look at them and no, this is this is alcoholic residue from alcoholic beverages. So they would actually harvest those grains, grind them up and actually brew alcoholic beverages. It was only later that bread was developed, probably from the used over, uh, you know, the used over grains after the process was still had some nutrition. But uh, yeah, they, so, I mean, I can't say drinking alcohol is good, but that's, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we just didn't, yeah, c cutting the, 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 that carbs out of your body, the bread carbs, the grains of all types, I think, into when, a certain extent. When you and I were kids, I'm sure that, you know, that you were, you saw a library and or you were at the bookstore you know yes oh yeah oh yeah we had those things right? and there now, was you know and now nowadays the libraries at least in new york they're not that busy at all oh no yeah it's yeah. bad it's so sad that there's like no one is reading books anymore we have libraries here and and it's like all the people are sitting at computer screens and, and the racks are just left for themselves and they all these people they go in there because it's a cheap computer or something and they can't afford it or something that's where you see you don't see the reading no and yeah my, my parents would not let us watch we would only be able to allow watch certain television shows right it was like a treat maybe in the day you know after dinner 
you could watch like a couple hours of television shows that were approved because they were, you know, the sort of things that our parents would, you know, there was moralism back there. You know, one, one, one of the, one of the approved shows I was able to watch when I was a kid was Dukes of Hazzard. <laughs> <laughs> you remember BJ McKay and the bear? Yep. Yeah. yeah. That's what I remember seeing as a kid. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. or or you know reruns of the original Star Trek. Yep, those. Yeah, even those are the other. I can't. Yeah, we all saw the National Geographic specials. Yeah. Those were allowed to be seen. Well, you know what? I'll tell you. You know, I I always liked watching Peter Jennings when he was on ABC. You know, when I was a kid, I just mm -hmm. as 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 he was an anchor when he just started, and. um you know, so it was always kind of, and this is before cable came to the house, before they laid the line. Oh, on. okay, yeah, we had, yeah, we had, so, we had exactly three stations where I lived because we were out in a, you know, we had three stations. That was it. That said it, and and there wasn't a lot, you know. We had four, but be, that, oh, because man. we were in Detroit, we would be able to get a broadcast from Windsor, Canada. All right, oh. so we had two, four, seven, and Channel Thirteen, which was the broadcast that was coming from Canada. So, and watching the Peanuts, you know, Snoopy. Oh, yep. the one, the yep. I, remember I, I, I remember being able to see on Channel 13, the French version of it, because it was coming oh. from Quebec. Oh, yeah, that would make sense, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So, so well, I think, uh, you know, I think we've explained the benefits of C60, Ken, to the, to the audience and how they can kind of, you know, mix it with some other things and, you know, on my store. C60 and the ester ketones for people with, with dementia and other mental problems. Anecdotally, it's just amazing. Interesting. Huh. Yeah, ester ketones and C60, just those are, those are like chocolate and peanut butter when dealing with uh, mental decline. Right, right, right. See, what I've been doing on the anti-aging uh, boxes, you know, I couple with, you know, all these different supplements and C60 is one of the core of, of this, this protocol. I also have partnered up with Boomer products. So oh, yeah. a lot of oh, their yeah, supplements, I mix your supplement with their supplements. And I also partnered up with two different laboratories that are in, um, in Utah with yeah. structural yeah. nanosilver. But yeah. this whole idea of neutralize pathogens bring down inflammation and you know bring down free radicals as a kind of this protocol right and one of a, 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 an added supplement that i that i put in there is the clarity factor from from boomer yes and yeah i use i so use boomer products yeah. yeah yeah no i just and i you know and people are happy with you know with this this curating of these anti aging boxes. So that's you know. what, yeah, because you got to you got to work the whole thing because it's just you know it's not just one thing. It's it's like a multiple of things. And yeah, the Boomer products have some really nice, uh, uh, like the one the what is it? They, I can't remember the name right now, but the one where they for us geezers where they have the whole vitamin mix in the. Scoop. Oh, that's the um the bar that that's the the heirloom barley. No, not the early barley. It's the other one. It's it's like uh, anyway, I'll have to think about it. What it is? Yeah, I don't. I don't remember. Oh, I, 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 gladiator, gladiator. I think they call it gladiator. Yeah, that's yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, the glad. Yeah, I haven't been using the barley because I've been trying to avoid the uh, the uh, though it does have all kinds of benefits. Right. Gladiator right. barley. Well, well, it's gladiator barley. Barley that they it really help the gladiators. So, but I've been trying to keep keep low on that on that. So, but of course, another problem with all of our grains is they spray glyph glyphosate on the grains before they harvest them because it, they want to harvest at the uniform uh, moisture. So they kill them and then harvest them. And that's why, but, but they ban glyphosate in Europe. So like a lot of people, you go to Europe and people eat all kinds of grains and they have, there's no problems at all. They say, this is wonderful, blah, blah, blah. And then they come back to the United States and take, you know, get some grains and get sick. And it's because the glyphosate levels in our grains are just so high that they, they allow all kinds of things to happen in the United States, which are banned pretty much everywhere else. Right. If a farm is certified organic, do they have that problem? No, they don't. And there's another, there's also a lot of modern wheats have like really high levels of gluten. They've been genetically engineered or, or just bred to have high levels of gluten. And there's a thing called Sonoran wheat. 
And it's the same wheat that the Spanish colonialists brought over from Spain, you know, in the 1500s, right? To uh, And so you can actually buy that. They grow it down south in Mexico and in Arizona, and you can buy that grain. And it's uh, they don't it's also organic, so they don't spray stuff on it. And and it has a lower gluten profile, and a lot of people like using that. You know, it was so interesting. I had I had a um, one of my graduate level seminar classes that, that, uh, right before I finished my coursework at Harvard, before I started my research on the tap protein for HIV. Um, this seminar class that we had. There was 13 grad students in there. And uh, the whole class was based on research papers and, you know, going over the details and critiquing them and, and the, you know. And what a part of the class was dealing with CRISPR. Another part of the class was dealing with genetic engineering and the benefits of it, right? And what was so interesting out of the 13 grad students I would say about half. So it was, a, it was a good, you know, almost half were for genetic engineering and the other half was against. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, you know, you had people that were, you know, high powered minds, you know, in the class trying, you know, that you could see the ethical divide, you know, where, yeah. they, they, you know, they, they felt justified, you know, through logic, you know, it wasn't like, you know, that they, but they logically could justify their positions either way. You know, I was against Franken food, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm against genetic manipulation. Of food I don't, supply. I don't think, you know, we, we can, yeah, but there are people that are for it, you know? Oh yeah. Because you, you, yeah, it's just, yeah. It's not makes... just big. It's not big. Ad, it's not just big. Ad. Oh, there no, are no. researchers that ethically have a foundation in their mind that doing all this gen genetic manipulation in the food supply is justifiable to, you know, help with nutritional needs for certain mm -hmm. societies or reduce, um, you know, um, destruction of crops because of pests or whatever. Yeah. But they found like in CRISPR, they found all kinds of problems because CRISPR, you know, it's, it cuts out other things as well. And there's unintentional benefit. Exactly. There's unintentional. It's not, it's not targeted very well. The yeah, pan, exactly. pan sequence isn't very. Is, it doesn't target very well. So it's, you know, if you have a PAM sequence, um, you know that that might be if, you know, in a particular let's say um, chromosome, that may be a hundred. There may be a hundred of them. Well, how do you know which which of the hundred you're targeting? Yeah, exactly. And so they, you know, I just, you know, so you're going to have unintended consequences or collateral damage. It's too blunt of an instrument as it is designed right now. It's too blunt of an instrument to be, to, to be surgical for the cutting and pasting of, of a particular. Well, yeah. Sequence. I think the same with any mRNA kind of thing. That's not what we yeah. want to go to. Let's, <laughs> let's not go down that road. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're yeah. trying to stay on YouTube here. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, but, yeah, okay. you gotta be, I, uh, I have, yeah, I have a whole, I mean, nature, I don't, I just don't think we have the knowledge and the science to go messing with that yet. Maybe somewhere in the future, but the unintended consequences of stuff like that, which we've found many times is just, it's just not worth it. Exactly. 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 Well, I think, uh, you know, the, I think the audience has been able to get, you know, some thoughts from you and from me about how to improve their health through C60 and how to couple it with, you know, different types of supplements mm -hmm. and some of the, you know, bogus data that's out there to try to discredit uh, oh, certain yeah. types of supplements, you know, like C60. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We should point out that this is not unique to C60. There's just a lot of uh, hit pieces going on there. Well, so there's hit pieces on D3. There's hit pieces. Oh, on yeah. MN. There's hit pieces on resveratrol. There's hit pieces on you know, vitamin C and all this stuff, you know, you know, I, you know, the thing is, is that the wisdom of a grandmother, you know, is pretty powerful. And every time we were sick as kids, it was take more vitamin C and have chicken soup. All right. Yep. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, know, you know, and, you know, and yep. you got better. You know? I remember that. And, yes, it was. Literally in medical school, they say vitamin C doesn't do anything for a cold. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> you know, biochemist. 
I'm dead serious here. You have a biochemist that's saying vitamin C doesn't do anything, that taking extra doesn't doesn't help. And I'm like going, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And but but he said that eating one carrot a day is going to improve your your eyesight. One carrot a day. All right, yeah. beta carotene, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, but you need a hell of a lot more than one carrot to improve your yes, eyesight. Exactly. So that's that's why supplements. That's just like they're, but you know, it's so. It, I, I honestly, I think these biochemists, you know, at, at times, especially you know when they're coming from the medical the medical field, um, I just I, I I think that they. Um, if all you really got mention to what what has been going on on the naturopathic or the the natural route. You know, there's a synergy there. Yeah, it's sad right. that they, they they don't see it because they have the education to to, 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 yeah. to bridge the gap. But if all you've got is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, for sure. But it's just it, it was so funny to see this guy. You know, he was so hell bent on saving his eyesight with one one carrot. But it did, but if yeah. you have a cold, take an extra vitamin C. It isn't gonna help. <laughs> no, they're just they get into a box. I think they've spent too much time in the in academia and not enough time in reality. Right, right. Oh, okay. Well, thank you very much, Ken, for Great. for coming onto the show and explaining C sixty and you know telling me all more of these than once every year and a half or whatever it was. Yeah, we should, and you know, I really enjoy our conversations on current events because they're they're <laughs> they're informative. But unfortunately, <laughs> those kinds of conversations would only be able to be on Rumble, Bitchu, yes. right? Yeah, they would, not, <laughs> they would not make it through not five minutes on YouTube. All right, right, right. So and maybe we'll do. We'll we'll schedule yeah. something for that. Okay. So thank you for coming on to the channel. And uh, let me stop the recording here.